at this point, what is the craziest rumor you heard about yourself? Mm. The craziest rumor I heard about myself. Hmm. Oh my gosh, that's a good question. The craziest rumor I heard about myself. Oh yeah. That I <laughs> so silly. That I have sexual intercourse with every guy I do a video with. That's the craziest rumor. Cause it's like, how y'all know? Y'all don't. Like so I feel like that's the craziest rumor. Cause what these people don't know is like I'm such a businesswoman when it comes to, you know, when it comes to views or you know, doing what the people want to see or or grabbing people's attention. I'm so good with that. So I know what to do. I know what to say. I know how to put things or make things seem just so y'all can keep watching. So it's like when they say that, it's like, what the fuck? Like, I don't even find these niggas attractive like y'all find them attractive. So that's the, it's, it's, yeah, that's crazy. That's probably the craziest rumor. But do you feel like you feed into that rumor? Um. Because like you just said, you know how to play. Well, you said something like, you know how to play with yeah, it or um, something in you, that You're right. I, I feel like I do give off that energy. Um, especially when I do like flirta flirtatious stuff on camera or, um, you know, dirty truth or dares or never have I ever just real flirtatious stuff to make them think that. So, I, 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 I mean, I see why they would think it, you know what I mean? Because I feel like outside looking at I probably would think too like, oh, yeah, they fucking for sure. But now we not. I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> what is the percentage out of 100 percent of mm -hmm. the people you've been in a video with that you actually have? Had sex with? Yeah. A percentage? Yeah. Out of 100%. <laughs> with all the people you've been with in a video, what's the percentage you actually did? Like 1%. If, if, okay. And was that like one? One person. Oh, one person. That's that just one. And was that one person, did they end up becoming a boyfriend? Mm-mm. We, we, we just friends. To this day, we still friends. Why didn't it go past? Um, Because I didn't want it to. Um, I didn't want it to. Just a simple fact because I'm I'm just not ready for a new relationship right now. Um and I feel like I wanna I wanna work on myself. Also, he not really my type. Um he a cutie for sure, but he just not my type. He not my type. Mm. Who is he? I don't wanna say any names. <laughs> and when it comes to rumors, mm -hmm. and, and and also by the way, this particular rumor. Uh, people thinking you may have slept with somebody you were in a mm -hmm. video with. Have you ever addressed this publicly? Oh, mm -mm, cause I feel like a hit dog will holler and it's not true. So I don't really get offended by it. It's just like, dang, that's crazy. I think that. The, the actual 1%, one person. person. Yeah. Did any, did anyone say, oh, I think you guys are. Oh yeah. All the time. Oh, but, the so time. technically they were right. They, I mean, kind of, but. I don't sleep with everybody I do a video with. That okay, was wrong. Okay, so that's wrong. Right. But one of the people you did. One. Right. And that was recent. Like, recent. Like, and we've been doing videos for years now. It's recent. It's like, oh, about time. <laughs> when you say about time, does that mean you fell into some sort of pressure to do it? Um, When I say about time, it's like... Um, I'm going off, people were saying, oh, they're doing it, they're doing it, or they're going to do it. It's like about time, meaning like, well, yeah, I guess you could say I kind of fell under pressure, but I did it because I wanted to. And at the time, I was drunk, so I don't even count that. I was drunk. I don't count it. It, it, it wasn't planned. It wasn't supposed to happen. So if you were sober, it wouldn't have happened? Nope. I, I swear to God, to this day, he still asks. And I'd be like, mm-mm, I don't want to. That be was a one-time thing. Because of that situation, have you stopped drinking? Liquor. Yes, I have. Um, I drink it sometimes, occasionally, but I know my limit now. It's like, oh yeah, let me not drink too much to the point where I, I do something that I'm gonna regret in the morning. What were you on? Uh, Henny. How many? Oh, I took like seven shots that night. Yeah, I was trying to get lit. <laughs> Did this person take advantage of that? Um, the fact that you had been drinking? I, but he was a little drunk too. But I'm not gonna say he took advantage of it, but I, I do feel like he kind of pushed the issue. Cause any other day, if when when he asked or mentioned it, I kind of was like, nah, I'm not trying to do that. I'm not really, you know, on that. 
And he knew that. So I feel like, and people always say, oh, when you're drunk, you don't know what you're doing. But I feel like you're more aware when you're drunk. So I feel like he knew what he was doing. But he kind of was like, let me just, we're going to get a little bit more lit. I already know where this is about to go. You know? So, yeah. Some people say the truth comes out mm -hmm. when you drink. Right. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's what some people say. <laughs> but at this point with this person, what what kind of terms are you at at this As point? As of now? Yeah. Oh, we're just friends. We real cool. To okay. this day, we still cool. This, mm -hmm. this didn't hurt the friendship, the fact that you guys actually... No, it didn't. Not at all. And I'm happy. I, I was kind of surprised. Um, kind of, because I'm going to say I'd be uncomfortable, but it kind of just be like, it's it's a situation I don't want to talk about. Like, he'll probably mention it, bring it up, and I'll just be like, mm -mm, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> so he, ha oh, it, bringing it up to you in private? Yeah. Oh, like, okay, oh, okay. you remember when, or it wasn't it crazy? I'll just be like, I don't remember that. I don't remember. <laughs> but he hasn't gone public about this. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. When it comes to rumors, what is your policy on them? Rumors? Yeah. Do you address them? Do you clear them up? You sweep it under the rug and let people talk. Well, so like I said, a lot of times if it's not true, I'm not really going to pay it no mind. Because I feel like a hit dog will holler, like I just said. And I feel like when people speak about something that's not true or trying to just, you know, prove that, oh, they're lying, it's not true. It's just, it just make it look obvious like they, they, like they lying about something. So I'll probably just be like, oh, y'all can believe what y'all want to believe. Or I'll just probably be like, that's not true, but okay. But I won't adjust it again. Also, a rumor can break a person down. Mm -hmm. Has that ever happened to you? Ever mm -hmm. been broken down by a rumor? Let me think. Not lately. Nah. Not in some years. Um, I think when I first started doing social media when I was about 14, 15 years old, um, it was like little things people would say about me that would hurt my feelings. But as of now, like, I, I, I sleep on the rug. It's nothing that really affects me at all, really. I'm numb, for real. <laughs> Back then, when you weren't numb, how did you cope? Um, so... I used to cry myself to sleep. I do remember me doing that when I was young. Um, I used to um, take sleeping pills. I was real hip on sleeping pills. Like, I kind of just wanted to go to sleep so I won't have to think about it. Or and when I wake up, I'll probably take another one. And when I wake up again, I'll take another one. Um, so, yeah. Did your parents know this was going on with the sleeping pills? Uh, my mom had a clue, but... She, my mom, she, she, on, she be on sleeping pills too. So she kind of was like, she probably just want to go to sleep, you know? But I didn't necessarily tell her like, mom, the reason why I'm taking a sleeping pill because I'm in pain and I don't want to face it. So, yeah. So you were self-prescribing. Right. Some sort of drug to help you. Yeah. Get through with this. It was Benadryl, um, Tylenol, PM, extra strength. <laughs> Those were two different ones, or that's the actual. It was it was two different ones: Benadryl and maximum strength of Tylenol PM. And you would choose one or the other, or you would do both. Both, actually. Oh my God, it's so crazy! I would do both. I'll put I'll take two Benadryls and two Tylenol. Mm -hmm. Was that dangerous at that time? I feel like it was dangerous, especially me being so long. I'm, I'm sorry, being so young. Um, I feel like it definitely was dangerous, and I feel like you know once I um. Once somebody starts taking a dose and they start getting used to that dose, it starts not to work no more. So I literally used to like take more and more to the point where it was like, ooh, let me chill out. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this too many in my hand, you know? So yeah. What do you think's the most you took? Like six. Six. What age? I was like 15. Mm hmm. Now, did you have open communication with your parents about these things you were going through or you were holding it all inside or what? So I used to tell my mom and talk to my mom about it. My mom is close. That's my best friend to this day. Um, but I don't think she was very understanding of it. She'll just be like, so what? Or people going to talk to the day you die. You know how black mamas be. 
Like, she was just real, like, just ignore them. And it's kind of like, it's easier said than done, you know? Do you think at that time you should have seen a professional about it or your mom should have just been more understanding about it? I definitely feel like I probably should have seen a professional about it because after a while, like, I started having, like, real suicidal thoughts um, and things like that. Like, I used to be real broken. Like, this social media stuff really changed my life, honestly. Um, and it's, it's, and it's kind of like, especially when you're so young at a young age and it's people who you never even met a day in your life start talking bad about you. It's like, damn, like, what the, like, what the fuck I supposed to, like, how I supposed to feel, you know what I'm saying, about this? Or what I supposed to do about this, you know? Could so, be yeah. adults talking about you on social media, too. No, it definitely was adults, too. Mm-hmm. You're older now. You're 20 years old at yeah. this point of the interview, right? Mm -hmm. It's 2020. Right. Knowing what you know now, how should you have handled that situation back then? Know what I know now? I should have just prayed, prayed about it. Um, Cause I'm real, I'm real spiritual. Me and JC, we like this, Jesus Christ. <laughs> we close. Um, and a lot of things, you know, to this day, I still may get depressed or, you know, start feeling some type of way about certain things. And I would just pray and I would just start feeling better or I'll put on some gospel and I'll just start feeling better. Ever seen a professional about some of these feelings like depression you're going through? Never. Um, or I you've think gone when through? I used to be in school, I used to go to my conference, my, my, uh, school counselor, sorry, <laughs> conference. I used to go to my school counselor and we used to have talks about it and she made me feel better a little bit. Um, but you know, after a while you got to go back to class. <laughs> you can't talk all day, every day. So, yeah. When it comes to depression, this is self-diagnosed. You've never been diagnosed. Never been diagnosed with that. Mm -hmm. And this is something that you still face or battle with? Yes, from time to time. Mm -hmm. And even though we're talking about it now, do you think you need to see a professional? Would you be open to seeing a professional about this sort of thing? If I ever get to that point where I'm, I'm, I'm having suicidal thoughts again, I definitely would see a professional. But... As of now, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm testing you like, I'm cool. And the counselor back then when you saw them, mm -hmm. uh, you, you discussed these social media issues that mm -hmm. you would face? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, they was pretty, you know, they kind of dealt with it, you know, um, cyberbullying. Um, even with kids at the school or, you know, if somebody would post something in the class. But with me, it's like, they peers are talking about them. These are people from out of state that I never met talking about me. So that's what they'll kind of just be like, yeah, you know, you just got to sometimes you got to get off social media. Just saying, you know, cliche stuff that's like, uh, OK, like tell me something I don't know, you know. But I just feel like the, you know, just me even, you know, getting off my chest made me feel better. I feel like at the time. How many so. times did you see this particular counselor? Oh, man, I probably went to the counselor like in the whole school year span, like 23 times. A lot. And it was the same person you would see? It was the same person. Mm -hmm. Female, male? Uh, she was a female. Mm -hmm. Do you think that helped? It did. I feel like it did. She definitely got me through um, some things. So, yeah. And it was something you voluntarily do? Yeah. I'll just be like, you know, my teacher would say, hey, like, why are you not doing your work? Or are you okay? And I'll just be like, can I just go see the counselor? So, yeah. You never used it as a way to get out of class? Maybe once or twice. <laughs> Did your mom know you seen a counselor? I don't. I didn't really mention it to her. Um, I don't think I mentioned it to her. No. And when it comes to your self-diagnosed depression, what's the longest amount of time you've actually dealt with it? Mm. About with it. Like six months. Mm -hmm. Six months. Does that run in your family at all, depression? My family is so uh, religious. They just, they give everything to God. So they may be depressed for that moment, and then they just go to church or something and they feel better. <laughs> and I know back then you would deal with, you would use sleeping pills to aid, you know, some of these feelings that you encountered or some yeah. of these obstacles that you faced. But nowadays when you do have a bout with depression or maybe one of your recent bouts, uh, how do you cope? I just pray, listen to gospel, 
I pray. Um, I'll probably get off my phone and just do something productive to get my mind off of it. Now, my other question to you here is, because you've used two phrases. One, you said that your family's religious, mm -hmm. but when you uh, describe yourself, you say you're spiritual. Hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. I guess it is a difference, huh? So when I say I'm, I'm spiritual, I mean, I've, I kind of look at that as the same thing. But when I say spiritual, my spiritual is like I'm real close with like God, like the spirit. Like I have an actual relationship with the spirit of God. So um, I would say that's why I'm spiritual versus my family. Um, my mom's spiritual too, but my other family, they'll just probably be like, yeah, I'm going to just go to church and pray about it. But they never like, oh, I have an actual relationship. I feel like it's two different things because some people say, oh, yeah, like I'm a Christian. I'm I'm religious. I'm spiritual. But I feel like you're not really spiritual unless you actually have a relationship with that spirit. You know what I mean? Like if you don't have a relationship with them, like I have like my relationship so strong. <laughs> <I'll> be, <laughs> I'm sounding so holier than thou right now. Um, well, so like my relationship is like even when I'm like my stomach hurting, I be like, ooh, like. God, please make me feel better. Or if I'm bored, I'll be like, God, can you just, you know, bless me, guide me with something? Like, I have an actual relationship. You know what I mean? I feel like I do. I feel like I do. So you do follow religion? Yes. Christianity? Mm -hmm. Christianity. Mm -hmm. And is it a certain denomination under Christianity? What do you mean by that? So according to Wikipedia, mm -hmm. a denomination is a subgroup within a religion that operates under a common name, tradition, and identity. So under Christianity, for example, there's Eastern Orthodox, there's Roman Catholic, and then there's varieties oh. of Protestantism. Nah, I'm, nah, I'm not really that kind of religious. Okay. Like Catholic, stuff like that. Um, more so just Christian. Just, yeah, more so just Christian. Honestly, like, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna stop identifying myself as a Christian, um, but I'm more like a, like, I follow what I feel is right. You know what I mean? Because sometimes I would go to a Christian church and I'll just, you know, I would hear something the pastor would say and I wouldn't really agree with it. You know, versus some Christians, they'll be like, oh, yeah, that's the pastor. Like, yeah, he, yeah, we, you know what I'm saying? He right, 100%. Me, it's like, if I'm unsure about something, I'll either look it up myself or I'll ask God to, you know, reveal it to me, you know? So I feel like I'm more just spiritual. I'm going I'm to look up what kind of kind of religion person I am because, you know, Christian is a, a good way to describe it. But I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit deeper than that, you know? And when do you think, uh, what age or what grade, mm -hmm. would you have considered yourself spiritual mm. throughout this journey? I would say when I reached about 17 years old, um, before I hit 17, I was going through a whole bunch of stuff with management, um, you know, money issues. I remember the last, last time I was here, I was working at McDonald's at the time. We talked about that. Um, so I kind of felt like I fell on my face, you know what I mean? Like flat on my face and I didn't really have nobody to turn to and I felt like my back was against the wall at this time. Um, and that's when I started really getting into you know, spirituality and, you know, getting, having a relationship with God. That's when I started. And after I started, like, my life just got better. <laughs> and being that your family is religious, mm -hmm. uh, how do they react to that? To what? The fact that you consider yourself spiritual, mm -hmm. the fact that you describe yourself in this manner. Yeah. Um, my family is pretty, you know, they pretty lenient when it comes to having like my own way of doing things so you know they'll probably have a little bit to say about it like all right well you know as long as you write with god you know stuff like that but so they don't really have a problem with it as long as they you know what i'm saying they know i accept jesus christ as my personal lord and savior they cool <laughs> and when it comes to christianity who raised you under this um ooh, ooh, i hope i don't cry <laughs> Have you ever had that happen? Like, yeah, I just start crying. Oh my gosh. We have paper um, towels on the side here. Okay. Uh, so my grandfather actually, um, 
made me get deeper into it since I was a baby, since, you know, I was playing with baby dolls and stuff. Um, he always were preaching to me, but I was so young, I didn't really know. Um, and he recently passed back in April. Um, so that's kind of what I've been dealing with. Um, and I just feel like my family really um, counted on him to just really force Christianity in our life. So when he passed, I'm not, I'm not gonna say my family kind of um, shot away from Christianity, but I felt like the pandemic hit too. So it's like, we couldn't go to church no more. I feel like um, him passing, uh, cause he will always be the one to have Bible study at his house. You know, real religious things. So when he passed, we kind of just stopped really taking it serious. Um, so yeah. Some churches moved on to virtual mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Uh, did your church Yeah, my, my church have a virtual to, option? Yeah, they, they do have a virtual option, but it's so crazy because before the pandemic hit, I kind of didn't want to go to my church no more because um, I felt like they was too money hungry. So they used to talk about money a lot and, you know, how serious, you know, paying ties is. And I just felt like. It was it was pissing me off, so I stopped going. So I didn't care to do the virtual option. So yeah. What was the name of this church? Oh, no, I can't say that. <laughs> That's gonna be bad. Oh my god. <laughs> nah, I'm not gonna say the name. Mm -mm. And uh, your grandfather. Uh, mm -hmm. This was on your mother's side. Yes. Mm -hmm. And may I ask how he passed? Yeah, um, so he was real sick in the hospital for a very long time. So we kind of already knew it was going to happen. But it's one thing when you know it's going to happen, then it actually happens. Um, so I feel like I think he had an infection in his back or something like that. Um, he was in the hospital, like he lost his memory. Um, he had to go through like therapy, speech therapy, muscle therapy. So he was on bed rest for a very long time, like before the pandemic, like so long. Um, so that's kind of how he passed. So he passed of a heart attack, of heart attack, um, a little after, you know, the sickness kind of passed, but he was still in the hospital. Then a heart attack just came about out of nowhere. Was he getting better prior to the heart attack? It was on and off. Um, so he started to get better. And then he he just totally started going like going downhill again. It's like he was getting better, and then out of nowhere he just was so sick out of nowhere. So he was getting better, but then he really wasn't, you know. So from your knowledge, this was going to be the end result to him actually going. Yeah. Uh, how, how much of a time period was that? Oh man, it probably was two, three months, six months, mm -hmm. a year. Yeah, probably about a year, probably about a year on the head, actually. He was in the hospital for like a year on the head, and he just went out. When he finally passes, uh, was it a surprise, or you knew a couple days beforehand when it was this was going to go down? Um, it wasn't a surprise for me because I just – Something like me and my granddad was so close. He practically raised me. Um, it was a point where my mom had me at a very young age and she just really didn't know how to go about, you know, raising a child. And he kind of just took me under his wing. So I just, I just knew, like, I kind of just, I don't know. Like, I just felt like I felt it um, deep down inside. Oh mm, my gosh. Ooh. Take your time. Yeah. It's no pressure. So I felt it deep down inside. Um, I felt like his faith started to go away. Um, he forgot about his wife. He forgot his wife even existed. And I felt like family do keep you afloat in a sense. So I felt like if you forget about your family, like you don't really got nothing to fight for at that point. You know what I mean? So. But the hospital or doctors didn't say, okay, he's got three days left. No, never. And they didn't give they you They always warning. would tell us he was getting better, and then he just never got better. Do you think the hospital really meant that, or the doctors really meant that, or they just were saying stuff to just kind of stay positive or make you guys feel I feel like comfortable in some sort of at way? At some point, they were being truthful, but in other times, I felt like 
they were saying it to keep our hopes up or it'll, he'll be better for that day or something. And then, like, the stuff just start going downhill. So they kind of, because I feel like doctors, they don't be knowing for real. Like, I, I Honestly, I don't care how long I be on this earth. I just feel like doctors can't tell you when you're going to die. You know what I mean? Like, that's not they call. I don't think so. Because I'm talking about, it's people that say, like, hey, you're going to die in a year. And they still living 10 years later. You know what I mean? So, yeah.